Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to module 13 on analyzing data, specifically incidents, prevalence, percentages, or proportions, and rates. So I am Dr. Venus Oliva Clomer Sales. Please call me Doc Ivy. I am a founding member of the Philippine Society of Public Health Physicians, the managing director of 101 Health Research, and I am also a pediatrician by training. Our learning objectives for this module are the following. First, we will review the concepts of measuring the occurrence of disease, which refer to proportions and rates, specifically prevalence and incidence. I know that this was mentioned in previous modules, but we will go in more detail in this module. Second, we will compute for the prevalence of a disease in the school setting. And third, compute for the incidence of a disease in a school setting. The school has an important role to play in public health. Did you ever think about that? Why is this so? It is because children spend most days in a week with their teachers. The teachers are among the first to observe when a child is sick. Particularly in the Philippines, we have a very young population compared to other countries, such that there are our school children comprise a big proportion of our population. Now, school children may report for themselves or may report about their classmates when someone or when they feel unwell. Okay, and parents will usually tell you, teachers, um, when their children are sick. So therefore, they are unable to go to class due to some illness. And therefore, schools are often the first to know when there are health issues like outbreaks in the local community. Moving into the new normal. And with the resumption of face-to-face -face classes, it is important for you teachers to document, report, and measure health issues of school children. The occurrence of disease can be expressed through rates or proportions. So rates indicate how fast a disease condition or signs and symptoms is occurring in a specific population. And this specific population can be the section, it can be the grade, it can be the school. It's up. The second we said is proportion. Proportion are fraction. So it expresses the fraction of the target population that is affected by a disease, condition, or specific signs and symptoms. And proportions are usually expressed in percentages if you uh, multiply by 100. That said, both rates and proportions are fractions. And what again is a fraction? We have a numerator and a denominator for fractions. Okay, so in epidemiology, the measures of occurrence of disease are through what we call measures of morbidity and mortality. But since our setting is a school and not the general population and not the hospital, we will just talk about morbidity and not mortality. So the basic measures of morbidity or of disease is incidence and prevalence. Okay, so we will focus on those two key concepts for this module. Okay, so what is incidence? It is the number of new cases. So the keyword there is new. New cases of a disease that occurred during a specific time period in a population at risk 
for developing the disease. So, it's most commonly reported as an incidence proportion or also known as risk, the word risk. Sometimes, it is also expressed as an incidence rate or incidence density rate. And now, let's uh, discuss what is incidence proportion and incidence rate. So, measures of incidence are also considered measures of risk because the numerators refer to new cases. That is, there is a transition from non-disease, walang sakit, to disease states. Okay? So that transition has been established. Note that incidence refers to new cases only, which will differentiate it from prevalence, which is old and new cases combined, and we will see that later on. So, what is incidence proportion? So again, proportion is a fraction. It has a numerator and denominator. And we'll look at the formula in a bit. So this refers to the proportion of people who develop the outcome of interest or disease among a target predefined population at risk of developing the disease within a fixed period of time. Now, other synonyms of incidence proportion in literature are risk, attack rate, probability of developing the disease, and cumulative incidence. So those are the synonyms. Then you will hear them across the news, across textbooks, you know. So that is, uh, uh, those are synonyms of incidence proportion. So if we talk about incidence proportion per 1,000 population, the numerator, again, is the number of new cases of a disease occurring in a population during a specific period of time. And the denominator is the total number of persons who are at risk of developing that disease in that population also within the same specified period of time. So if we are to you know, uh, show the formula, this is, this is it. Okay, number of new cases divided by number of persons at risk times 1,000 so that it is per 1,000 population. So it can also be computed as a percentage if we opt to multiply by 100 instead of 1,000. Now, for larger populations, it can be expressed as per 10,000, per 100,000, or per 1 million population. And you will usually hear this uh, when they report uh, incidents or yeah, incidents of let's say COVID nineteen across countries. So you will you will hear them express it as per ten thousand, per one hundred thousand, per one million population. It is important to note, okay, that the denominator refers to an at risk population. You will notice I keep on emphasizing that, which means that the people counted in the denominator can be part of the numerator. So for example, if the disease in question is unique to females, then the males in that population cannot be counted in the denominator. Okay, so that, that's, uh, that is what we mean by at risk. Now, measuring the incidence proportion is simple and straightforward when all people of the target population are observed within the same defined time period. Now, what do we mean by time period? It is, it is really up to you. It can be arbitrary. It can be one day, one month, six months, one semester, or one school year. 